How's everybody doing tonight? I'm your host, Diesel Greasel, and you're tuned in to Know What I'm Saying. I'm very excited because uh, we have a very, very special guest. He goes by the name of Brother Robert Muhammad, and he is a member of the Nation of Islam. Recently, I was granted an exclusive interview with him where he gave me the details of the Million Man March. As many of you may know, October marks the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. And the Nation of Islam is in the process of organizing the 20th anniversary of March with the theme, Justice or Else. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoy being informed. We have a lot of progress, and the Nation of Islam has a plan. Now, the plan it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, if you're a Christian, you're Jewish, you're gay, straight, male or female. The plan is a plan for all of humanity to get the respect that they deserve as human beings. Y'all stay tuned. Good afternoon. My name is Student Minister Robert Muhammad. I am the local representative for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, coming out of Muhammad Mosque number 64 in Austin, Texas. Um, but we are assisting the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and his regional representative, Minister Robert Muhammad. Well, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. The theme is justice or else. With the rise in the cases, with the, with the rise in the murders and the brutality of the black men uh, and women in our country, in our communities, um, we're growing tired and we're growing to become fed up of the injustice. And so we've reached a point to where we're gonna have to get justice or we're gonna have to die trying to get justice. We reached the point that where we uh, are going to have to get justice or we have to consider that we don't want to pass down to another generation this mentality of cowardice, this reality of being second class and third class citizens. And so this is the time that we must uh, approach our government and ask them to intercede in the brutality that is demand for them to intercede in the brutality um, that they see that our president has been too weak to step in and intercede and force the state, the, the states and the local governments to give us justice. And so we're gonna offer the government an ultimatum, is to intercede, give us justice, or else. The or else uh, part of uh, the theme is twofold. We are scriptural people. We are. Uh, 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 we believe in the Bible and the truths of uh, the truths of the Bible and the Holy Quran. And every prophet, messenger, and warner that came with a word, with a message from God, inherent in that message, inherent in that word, inherent in that revelation, was a threat. And so, the the threat is to give us justice, or else we have a God that will intervene. Also, we have a part to play in that. And our part is, we are now being beckoned to study the last three years of Martin Luther King Jr.'s lectures. And in those last three years, he talked about redistribution of the pain. He talked about uh, economic withdrawal. He talked about the night before he was assassinated, he talked about boycotting Coca-Cola. He talked about boycotting Wonder Bread. He talked about pulling monies, and so, in the black community, we're scheduled to pull out $1.3 trillion this year in 2015 from the American economy. But you know on Black Friday, after we get through celebrate th celebrating Thanksgiving, that we run out and we buy all the electronics, we buy all of the gifts for our children for Christmas. And that helps to balance out the economy for the nation. Well, what if we withheld that money? If we withheld that money long enough, then somebody will come and sit down at the bargaining table and say, okay, what is it that you all want? So that's 
where the oil else is coming in at. They started a move it, movement, Black Lives Matter. And you consistently see people trying to uh, inject all lives matter. Well, if all lives matter, if black lives matter, then what you find in the genetic makeup of black lives, you find all lives. You find, you find brown lives. You, you find the yellow man. You find uh, uh, the origins of the Caucasian. And so if black lives matter, then all lives, of course, matter. But the reason that there is a movement called Black Lives Matter is because what we see as the reality in our community and on these streets says that black lives do not matter to not only uh, uh, those that are outside of our community, but they don't matter to us as well. So those people are right. So we're fighting a war on two fronts. And so what we're doing as members of the Nation of Islam here, particularly in the Southwest region, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has asked us to get involved in conflict resolution. So we've developed something in Central Texas, and you'll find in the Southwest region and the uh, other five states that make up this region is uh, we've developed a squash the beef hotline. And so we want to help our people, particularly the young folks, to begin to mediate their beefs before it comes down to gunplay or, or, or stabbing or, or something that that you cannot take back. And so, yes, it's very difficult for us to petition the government to intercede in our slaughter if we're found slaughtering ourselves. Absolutely not. These artificial labels that we've allowed to be put on us and that we've accepted have separated us for generation after generation. And so you don't have to be a Muslim to experience injustice, but Christians, are experiencing injustice. Short people are experiencing injustice. Overweight people are experiencing injustice. Gay people are experiencing injustice. There are many different people, you know, and I've been telling uh, our beloved Christian community that it does not matter whether you are a Christian. It does not matter whether you consider yourself a Hebrew Israelite. It does not matter. When you walk out that door and get in your car and you get pulled over by someone who is who is a racist that's hiding among a blue wall and a shield that has become a haven to hide and protect racism, when they see the color of your skin, they don't ask you what religious denomination that you profess. They don't ask you if you got a degree or if you have a, a, a GED or if you graduated from high school. All they know is that you're a black man and you're a black woman. As we have seen all the way from the time when I was in high school with Rodney King down to Sandra Bland and uh, Mr. DuBose in uh, Cincinnati, that they have hatred in their hearts for us and the desire to kill us at, at any given moment. And so you have to be an individual that is seeking justice. So come under your own flag if you are seeking justice, 10, 10, 15, to the mall uh, this year, justice or else. This march is absolutely about love, um, the love of self. And if you love yourself, you will understand that um, we've been given certain rights as human beings. And one of those rights is justice. Justice is the principle of fair dealing. And so it does not matter. Um, in the Muslim program, and uh, uh, you will find it in the back of the Final Call newspaper, um, it outlines what the Muslims want. We want justice, regardless of class, creed, or color. So, um, so the march is not about hate, it's about love. But sometimes love drives you to hate for the scripture says you cannot serve two masters for you must love one and you must hate the other, right? So it's not about hate, but it's about love. Um, and what we hate is we hate um, the actions and activities that we see others um, in their behavior heaping on us. You know, hip hop and the young people, they are very important. When you look throughout history, every movement and every revolution was run and spearheaded by young people. Young people have the fortitude, young people have the courage, young people have the zeal to be free. They don't want to accept what their parents have accepted. So to that end, the hip hop community is extremely important. 
And when you look at some of the, the, the social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and those type of pages of some of our major artists, they have 1.2 million followers, uh, 2.5 million followers. They have millions of followers. If we are uh, effective at getting them to help us to promote the march and listen to the words of the, and the message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan about helping us to seek justice or else, then that means that the 1.2 million followers of Rick Ross, the millions of followers of Young Thug, the millions of followers of these major artists when they begin to alter their music slightly to mention 10, 10, 15, justice or else, that means they'll be affected by it. And those young people that um, our open enemy has never considered that would be a part of a great movement that would seek out justice for black people uh, all across this nation, they will be injected into this whole equation. And once that happens, then uh, it's all over. The Nation of Islam is a system of belief that has targeted, it is made available for all of humanity, but is specific to black men and women in America. The primary goal and premise is to acquaint the black man and woman to their origin, which is God himself. And so we teach that man is God and God is man. And if man is God and God is man, then we are a reflection of the creator that we say is so great. And so that expands the realm of possibility to those who believe because if God could cast and put the sun, moon, and stars out there, then we as a collective have the same ability to replicate what God has placed into the universe and his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is passed down through us generation after generation. So we are not the thugs. We are not the alcoholics. We are not the rapists. We are not those that we see and we're being portrayed as. Those of us that participate in illicit behavior, we should wear a shirt that say made in America because Allah, God didn't make niggas. The Caucasian in America made niggas.